Adrian, does the industry understand and respect the concept of patent and technology? And have you had to deal with patent infringements in your journey with Goldo thus far? You know, you would think, you would think that dealing with professionals in the industry, because those are the people I deal with, metallurgists, managers, CEOs, um, they're professionals. You know, they're, they, they're not uh, blue collar workers. They have some type of qualification and education and they can certainly research things if they don't understand something. These are, these are the type of, of people that I deal with. So you would think that I would never have to explain the do's and don'ts when it comes to patent technology. You know, you would say that that's already, that's a given that people would know. If you say patent and proprietary mach reactor, they're going to know what that means. Yeah. Like they should know what it means. But unfortunately, I have had actual uh, a case recently that has come up um, where somebody thought it was quite okay to copy a mach reactor. And, and I mean an identical copy of a mach reactor. They thought it was quite okay to copy it and to openly market it. To the industry and, and, and rename it. Um, not too sure what name they gave it, but um, at the end of the day, they didn't seem to think there was anything too wrong about that and they weren't actually doing a hell of a lot to conceal it, that they were marketing it. So, you know, you, but you would think, you know, what does patent protection mean? If you say I've got patent protection, quite simply it means you can't copy the technology. Yeah. You can't reverse engineer the technology. And if you do, you're liable to be sued. You're liable to have legal action taken against you. And if you're an employee in a company or, you know, if you're just starting out your own business, that's huge damage to reputation right there. Why would you risk it? As a professional, why would you risk it? You've, you've studied, you've built a whole career for how many years? And, and you're going to risk it on some piece of technology that you yourself don't really understand because you've just copied it. Yeah. You will never be able to take that technology to the the levels that the inventor can take it to. So I, I don't see the point, but, but people have done it. And remember, I am the inventor of the Mach. I did spend close to 10 years of my life making sure that that patent went around the world, every country. Um, I'm very au fait with, with the legal side of things. And I can tell you, I will not hesitate to enforce uh, my patent when I can see that there is in, you know, clear infringement. Yeah. So, you know, so you, you could ask, okay, well, what are the repercussions then? What legal recourse do I have as a patent holder? If somebody infringes, what can I do? What can I get? Well, firstly, there's financial compensation. So you can sue. And, and I don't mean this to be legal consultation. I'm not an attorney. Yes. But broadly speaking, you can sue. You can sue the person yeah. that has done the infringement. You can sue the company that yeah. the person is working for. Yeah. A lot of people don't know this. You can also sue the company that is using the technology. Mm. Now that is something people may not know. So if you actually go to this, to these people that have copied the reactor mm. and you take a reactor from them without doing your due diligence to check whether that's actually, that uh, uh, reactor doesn't infringe anybody else's patent. Do they, do they themselves, the company you get, do they have patent protection? If you don't have that as part of your due diligence or corporate governance when dealing with technology, yes. then you are at fault as well. So you, wow. you open yourself up to be sued, even though you, technically you'd say, well, what have I done wrong? I've just taken the technology from, from that company. They've copied it. But you are part of that whole web. Yes. And so you, you also be liable um, to be sued for compensation. So, you know, and there's many things. So you can say, fine, you've built a reactor, you've placed it wherever, that's great. Thank you for building it for me. Now pay me for the, re now you pay me for that reactor, my selling price. That's one thing I could ask for. Yes. So, you know, you, you've, you've built it. Yes. You spent the money manufacturing yeah. it. Yeah. It wasn't yours to build, but you've already gone and done business with it. So now compensate me accordingly. So, you know, I'm just giving you the, the various the ways day, that, yeah. uh, you know, my attorney will probably shoot me down for saying all these things, but, but those are all the avenues that are open to you, that you could go down yes. to, to, to seek a legal um, remedy. Mm. And, and so, you know, as a professional then, and the long and the short of this whole thing that I'm saying is, if you know something is patented, don't copy it.
Yeah. Don't reverse engineer it. Don't try to do business with it as though you have a license to. If yeah. you don't, stay clear of it. Rather use your professional brain to create your own, create your own thing. Rather, actually, yeah. go and invent your own piece of technology. Yeah. Use that professional mind, use your intellect. Do your own thing. Don't, don't copy other people's uh, um, technology because at the end, apart from the financial risk, I don't think you would ever, ever recover from the reputational yes. damage that you will suffer. That you suffer. Yeah. As soon as word gets out that this professional in the industry has done this illegal thing of patent infringement, I don't think there's a, that you would ever have the trust of the industry again. And, and is that really worth risking your whole career for? Yeah. I wouldn't think so. I think if you knew the repercussions of patent infringement, you would just never go near there. Leave it alone. Sure. That's my advice.